All right. How you been, Coop? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, uh, I've been good. We uh we had a nice little vacation from the uh the work, mm-hmm. which was necessary. Yeah, to reset your mind and. I mean, I'm still on that right now. I'm so happy that I'm still on the the hype of I don't give a shit about work. Yeah, it's so great. Yeah, I'm. I think I'm happier, which is letting me know something, mm-hmm. which I already kind of knew, but. It's nice to get reconfirmed things in your life. I'm like, all right, now this is now. I kind of know what direction I want to take this. You know? Yeah, yeah. So it's been great, though. Uh, we went to Legoland with the kids. Mm-hmm. And um, God, man, it was great. We um, we had a lot of fun. It was me and Steph's first. Well, no, it was my first time with the, with the kids. To, to, to Legoland. Legoland. And it was okay. her second time. But she went back when she was like 10. So basically... We were all kind of experiencing something new. Uh huh. And it was fun because it wasn't raining quite so much. And I don't know if you, oh man, dude, Southern California in this last week is just dumping. Yeah. It's raining. It's foggy. It's the most un, it's the most un SoCal weather. I was just going to say that ever. And it's just, it's just like, ugh. Well, I, I think it's just not SoCal, but just in California in general, we've been experiencing the most non-California, stereotypical non-California. We've True. been experiencing the most non-stereotypical California weather. There you go. That's what I want to say. Yeah, I'm like, okay, we got to be working our way out of this drought. Yeah. But see, the, just like, and I get it, the experts and like people that understand the logic would say, well... Just because you get a week worth of rain doesn't mean that's get you out of a drought. I get that too because it has to be like longevity. Yeah, right? yeah. But it's still it's like it's helping. Yeah. So, well, um, uh, um, I mean, it's more than we've gotten. Yeah, I mean, Tahoe's just they they were just getting swamped with fucking water up there with snow up there, which so, eventually turned to water. So Donner Pass is closed, which is yeah. the way to get up there and out of there. Yeah, I believe the fifty and the eighty are both closed, so you can't get out of Nevada. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, and uh, the grapevine is closed too right now. Yeah, I read that, and then um, in the fucking news, dude, I was watching KTVU, Fox News, free my boy, what? uh, Frank, someone free my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget that. Um, but they were saying how like they're like, oh yeah, grapevine is closed for your up to date. Check your check Twitter, and I'm like, bro, which fucking boomer ass person is going to be checking Twitter for the fucking weather report? Like, come on, man. Yeah, everyone knows they use Facebook. Yeah, I use Facebook. Um, just look at the pictures. Um, but when I was coming down from Oregon, like through um, Eureka and Redding, like Mount Chasso was fucking snowing. I oh, fucking, dude, it was, that's it was, how beautiful yeah. was that though? Oh, dude. Yeah. Actually, on my on my drive up here, actually, um. Passing the Alta Vista, I was like, dude, the Alta Vista, Alta, what's it called? The Altamont, Altamont. There you go. There you go. You made it sound nicer. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> the Altamont, I was like, fuck, dude, it's so fucking green, so oh, fucking dude, green, dude. Normally so it's just fuck- yellow. Yeah, and like a couple days ago, I went down to Paso Roble, and it's just so fucking green down the one on one. It's just it. I think as we get older, you. You you start liking nature. You start liking the more, um, the simpler things in life. You know, like like that picture I have up in my fa- in my uh, Facebook, uh, up in my Instagram when I went hiking up in Oregon. Like that was such such a cool moment to capture. Like here I'm in the middle of a fucking forest. It's, it was pouring, and like you have this big ass mountains. I'm just like looking up, I'm um, looking at these fucking trees. And another picture I didn't post. Was that um on the other side of that of that hike, where you, you get the coast, you get like the 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 Pacific coast, and it was just like such a fucking amazing view to see, like the water so choppy, rains coming down behind these fucking forests. It's just like you kind of stand there, you kind of just admire everything, and then you're like, all right, time to move because it's fucking cold. I'm getting yeah. wet as fuck, so. Um, but it was just a great thing. And I think that's something cool that once you get older, you start to admire more of nature. Um, and yeah, I mean, as much as we love to complain about the rain, it's definitely much needed to keep those beautiful sceneries green here, especially here in California. Cause, um, we're Californians. Yeah. We fucks with California. 
We like the weather. We don't like it cold. Mm-mm. You know, these people want to talk about snow. Go build your snow. You know, go build yeah. your little igloo and do your fun stuff. Just and, leave me out of it. And before people start writing us and telling us, like, oh, you want real snow? Go out to Jersey. Oh, you want real heat? Come down to Louisiana. I'm like, yeah, no shit. I, yeah. I know. This is why we pay the big bucks to stay here in California for the weather that we get. I mean, just... And it doesn't make the people better. It just I'm happier. You the adjust. Peop- the people suck everywhere. Yeah, you, know? you, you adjust. You adjust. Everybody sucks. Every everybody else. everybody sucks except for friends and listeners in other states. You guys are cool. So you guys matter the most. Absolutely. But only if you subscribe. <laughs> and um, you tell and you tell a friend. Right. If you don't share a link, you might as well just be a stranger to me. <laughs> Absolutely. But um, that's cool, dude. <laughs> that's cool. You went down to Legoland. Um. I haven't been. Okay, so um, I don't want to give away spoilers. Uh oh. No, really I said I won't give away spoilers. But what um, I will say is they do a really good job with the presentation mm-hmm. all around. Like it doesn't, you won't be disappointed. And um, because that's what I was worried about. I was worried it was going to be like a dumbed down, uh, cheap feeling of what I want it to be. And it was not mm-hmm. at all. It pretty much what it it was good. It was great. Um, we we stayed at the hotel. Oh. We, we we stayed at the Legoland Hotel, which was uh-huh. which was very very expensive. But okay. um, I mean, I don't think we've ever spent that much on our our own hotel rooms. Mm-hmm. So it was just like, well, it's a family vacation, right? But it was just like insanely, um, like insanely expensive. But it was um really really nice. Like mm-hmm. um, like I shared on my Instagram about the um. The elevator, the disco elevator. Oh. So that was in the hotel uh-huh. when you got into the elevator. And as soon as the doors closed, the disco ball started spinning and it was playing disco music. That's dope. It's dude. pretty sick. That's pretty dope. Like, That's it's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. And then, like, in the room, there was a, the kids had their own bunk bed area, mm-hmm. like their own little room, basically, with their own TV. Nice. And it was, like, themed like um like a temple, like Indiana Jones kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So they were in the temple part with, like, all the idols and the yeah, stonework, yeah. which was, like, plastic so they wouldn't get hurt. But then, like, the other, then the, the adults, me and Steph, we had, like, our own bed and section and our mm-hmm. own TV. So I was like, you could actually coexist with your children, you know? Yeah. And not have to deal with them. Yeah, because it's it's like they're all no separate. You, you're still divided. You're st- obviously you're still next to each other, but you're kind of divided in the suites. And it's kind of cool because like, as much as you love your family or you love your kids and shit, sometimes you need like the little. All right, y'all do your thing. Like at least for five minutes. Exactly. Like yeah, we love our family. We love our children. Absolutely. We love everything about the aspect of family. But in order for things to be a vacation. There has to be somewhat of a separation, right? Well, the whole point of vacation yeah. is like to have a mental reset and just right. kind of like break out of the norm. Mm-hmm. So I, I feel like you need that break in order to be successful. Vacation. So I did kind of exaggerate a little, like by saying it was so insanely expensive. Considering the amenities we got, it was it was it was it was it was pricey. Is mm-hmm. maybe a better way to put it. Okay, because it was really fun. It was something we would do again Mm -hmm. just because even when you save money in a hotel, it's gross. You don't even want to eat there. Mm -hmm. It's it's a whole thing. Like, stress becomes a cost, right? So it's like at some point paying a little more for less stress, I feel, is better. Yeah. You know, like even like when you go to a concert. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you want to be down in the pit, but sometimes you want to spend another 50 and be in the balcony. Yeah. You know, and just and watch the chaos and relax a little, but enjoy the mayhem, and yeah. not have to get yourself hit in the face. Like, um, oh, like, like I always said, dude. When it comes to like comfort, and when it comes to like food, I feel like you should never like go cheap on that. No, you can't really put um a price on on food, quality of food, and just like get yourself a nice pillow, get yourself a nice mattress. Because it makes a big difference. Real quick, what's your least favorite from your experience? What's your shittiest hotel like chain you would say is the worst? Oh, fucking Motel Six. Okay, I I'm I would have said Motel Six, but we had I had a worse experience at a Super Eight down in SoCal once. Super Eight. I don't think I've ever stayed in a Super Eight before. Yeah, don't. 
Okay. They're just they're I think they're sh- I think it's almost a step down. It's almost like a half step down from Motel 6. Okay. Cuz Motel yeah. 6 is pretty bad. Motel 6 is pretty bad, but I feel like a lot of Motel 6's issues is mostly the people that they get to go there. Yeah, that's what it is. It's not a nice hotel, but it really is just the surroundings that you hate. You're just like, oh, why am I here with all these filthy people? And I think I think at the end of the day, like, if you're just using it to, like, just to sleep, like, if you're just middle of nowhere, just need a place to rest up, shower, and whatever, sure. But if it's going to be keep for... keep your head down. <laughs> yeah, but if it's going to be for, like, a long stay or something, like, oh, yeah. yeah, you, you want to put the... Um, you know, you want the the nice Marriott. You want the Hiltons. You want, oh yeah, those you are know, nice. Yeah. Shoot, I was gonna say sometimes Holiday Inns are pretty nice. Yeah, that's not bad actually. It's a nice middle, and then I like the Best Westerns. Sometimes also not the bad. La Quintas aren't too bad. La Quintas, um, which other ones? Don't are? stay at the Red Roof Inns. Never stay at the Redwood Red Roof. Red, I've stayed there once, Red Roof but. The one in San Bernardino wasn't too bad because we st- I stayed there. When well. We went to- but they're normally, they're kind of like a Motel 6 What recently. the fuck are you doing in San Bernardino? Well, they, that was uh, for one of the OzFests because remember they ah, stopped doing yeah. national tours and it was just one shot. Yeah, and you went, I'm pretty sure you went to uh, San Bernardino Amphitheater or something. Yep, San yep. Manuel. Yeah, I've been there. It's nice. It's not bad. Not it's, bad. it's not bad. It's, uh, I love that they, I the thing I like about the San Manuel Amphitheater is I like the pit aspect in, in the, on mm-hmm. the floor because that's the thing I don't don't like about shoreline, shoreline is, is up I in wish, the grass. I wish they had a pit. Yeah, like have the grass but have a pit. Yeah, that's and I think that's why I like um, Concord one also the yeah. sleep train because they have like that pit. Kinda, the pit's nice. The pit's nice, dude. Uh, just s- getting to Concord sucks. It's that, funny. Oh yeah, the dude. Road is just so long. Yeah, like you get off the six eighty, and then you're like another half another, an hour, yeah, another like four. It's like another seven or eight miles, I think, up Willow Pass or something. Yeah, place. and you're in it forever because there's so many lights and stuff, dude. Um, Crazy. but the exit situation on that's way better than Shoreline. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, but I feel like I get not, but I don't know. Okay, so it's worse if you like it's backed up, but I've I haven't been to a show. When I went, maybe it's because I didn't go to a crack and crack and show. But when I went to Kiss in September, I rolled in there pretty smoothly, and I got parked in the shoreline. Yeah, but the exit. Um. Well, so my, I mean, you're always gonna wait a little, but my strategy with the exit is I always wait at least twenty minutes. Mm. When I once I see things starting to die down a little, then I go. I I never leave with the, like with right. the horde. Yeah, it's yeah. too much shit going on. People are like, plus here's the thing. Everyone's drunk too. Yeah. So I'll leave after all the drunk people rush out of here. It, it's like people <laughs> they can forget, kill everyone else. People forget the one in one rule. Like let a person, one in one, one in one. But, um. Oh, the zipper rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's funny how you bring up though San Bernardino because I got a little funny story about San Bernardino. It happened to me just yesterday. Oh, shit. Go yeah, for yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. We went to uh, Trader Joe's, Trader Ho. Um, to pick up some groceries for for dinner today, and um, there's a there's somebody already asking me if I'm sign up, you know, sign petitions or something, mm-hmm. and um, I'm like, ah, I don't feel like doing this right now. Like usually I'll stop and sign whatever. Like sure, you're like, dude, I just want some food. Yeah, I'm like, bro, I'm 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 going to my coffee shop. Let me go get my coffee. Let me get yeah. my iced latte, and then you know whatever. And this girl comes up, is like, oh, excuse me, register to vote. I could have easily, since I'm Mexican, I can get away with saying, like, oh, I can't vote. And, you know, case, <laughs> case closed. I can just, like, oh, I'm not, a, I'm not a citizen or something. Yeah. Case closed. I don't have to worry about it. I'm a felon. Yeah. <laughs> but for some reason, I'm like, oh, I'm going to say I am registered, but not in this county. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's um, so, that's, like, it's so funny because it's it's so, it's just believable because it's, like, in your head, you're like, why would he lie about that? Yeah, exactly. But then you are lying about it. Yeah. That's hilarious. So the lady comes up to me, and she's like, excuse me, are you registered to vote? I'm like, I am, but not not in this county. And she goes, oh, what county is that? She's thinking I was going to say, like, fucking Penin- like San Francisco or, like, Alameda yeah, yeah. or something. And I'm like, oh, San Bernardino County? She's like, oh, okay. And I'm like, yeah. and I'm like fuck Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. yeah you could have done too. You could have said Orange County because it's a little more right leaning and then she would have really been like, oh. Oh. 
Mm. Well, I think your vote counts more down there. But I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like... Here's the thing. I want to be sure if San Bernardino is a county. It sounds yeah, no, right. it is. It is. Okay, good. County? Okay, yeah. okay. All right. So I was like, it's perfect because if they're like, well, what are you doing up here? Yeah, but you know your business, lady. Yeah, oh, dude, it's so I, annoying. I, I yeah. wish some days I'll be more like Larry David and just tell people <sighs> like, hey, mind your fucking own business or something. Oh, dude, I know. Well, that's why I identify with him so much because people are so invasively annoying. Like, if you return the favor, like if you don't even answer a question. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, it's coming off defensive. Maybe you should answer it and then ask her, well, what county are you voting out of? Yeah. It's just like, what do you, well, you know, like, get out of here. Yeah. Do it, I got a stupid hat on my head with American flag on it? Like, listen, lady, I vote. Whatever you want me to, you know, sig- you're collecting signatures for whatever, I'm probably going to vote against it. Like, when they were doing the whole recall, I'm like, oh, well, I'm not for the recall. Oh, but it doesn't matter because you can still vote for it against them. Like, yeah. But, that's, yeah. But, that, but see, that's the same as people. Yeah, I hate that, too, because I'm like, look. Well, I don't know. But I'm like, don't force people to do shit. But th- both sides do that, though. Like, yeah. You know, and so- it's super annoying. It's like, why don't you just let people make a decision? I mean, I get it. It's the whole, pro- it's the whole democracy but it, but process. But it's fake. But that's not democracy when you when you're coercing someone to vote a certain way. Mm, they yeah. were trying to get you to look. I I support it. Yeah. I support the recall, but I don't support them pushing it on you. Yeah, like that should be your decision that you make. And and I just thought I'm like, oh yeah, well I'm not I'm not for the recall. And they're like, well it doesn't really matter if you think about it because you still get to vote on it. And I'm it like, it does matter. That's why he doesn't want to vote for so, it. So you know what I did end up doing? I wish we were both there. I would have been like, I agree with you, and I still think you're a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm for it, but fuck you. Yeah, you're um, a piece of shit. No, but like, so what I end up doing, dude, is like every time they'll be like, oh, uh, can you give me a sig-? Absolutely. I gave it like five times of my, like, I gave five um, signatures or something because they, cause they're going to count it. And if they have a, uh, like a double, then they get fined. Do they? Yeah. Did they count them that much? Did they check that? Allegedly. Yeah. So, I wonder if they even count them. Sorry, Steph, California. I cost you a couple of thousands. Of <laughs> I don't think there was enough to overturn them. Yeah, I don't think they care, anyways. But I was sad. But um, it's okay. Oh, dude. But <laughs> such. Like, it doesn't matter, though. No it, matter what, no matter what. We do in the state of California. We will always have an egomaniac as as an elected political official, regardless of their political affiliation. Yeah. They will just be an egomaniac, like whether it's a Republican or a Democrat. I just want someone that's not an egomaniac. I want someone that can do things and not have it be about their image, mm-hmm. which is hard to do with politics. But it it's really just like, is. Can we just get someone that wants to fix things more than just yeah? But get then they elected or move up to be a senator. Yeah, and, but then they. It's the fucking. It's a stepping ladder more than it is a position. Then they end up just calling that person a fucking commie or something, and uh, whatever. well, that's that's a complete, that's true. That, that's a completely. Different that's what one. I mean. Like it's never gonna get fixed. Yeah, it really isn't. We need to start. Maybe we need to elect animals to office. <laughs> hey, a relentless chimp. Are you saying we should elect animals as leaders? Oh, that's cool. That was a good little, yeah. that was a nice Ooh. little tidbit. Ah. Shout out to Toss and Abbasi. Woo. That guy's fucking a fucking amazing guitar player. Beast eight string guitar player. Can you imagine that shit, dude? And I mean. I can't even do my seven. Not to even, sh- I can't even do fucking a ukulele and that has four. Yeah. Um, no, but like not to shit on that band, dude, but like the guitar player is amazing. The bass player plays also with like a six string bass. Oh, I mean. Fucking amazing. There's only three dude. people, I believe. Yeah. And yeah, no, they're all. It's anytime it's a three piece oh, or yeah. a, or a project like that. Yeah, so progressive. Like everyone yeah. has to be like the best at what they do. Oh yeah, yeah. You know? yeah so yeah, I hundred yeah. percent because you got to kind of hold it down for him, and then like like the rhythm. Like I don't know how that band does that. It's crazy. Yeah, and then and then they bring in like when they're playing live with like the live track also, and they're just playing all to fucking click. Dude, oh, I saw amazing. them live. Oh, that was funny. I was super high. I took an edible and we were crossing the Bay Bridge and it was pouring rain. I think I told the story and then my buddy Dover was blasting ministry and I was like, turn it off. Mm-hmm. But when we got, it was a Devin Townsend Animals Leader Show. Devin Townsend was headlining and Animals as Leaders was playing. And dude, it was just like the rhythm with the eight string. Yeah. 
it's just so heavy and, yeah. and dude, it's just like it's so cool. Can't replicate that. I seen them once when they're open up for thrice, and it was just like, yeah, there's just like I'm seeing it and I'm like, fuck, this is not my cup of tea, right? Because it's like so like, yeah. I, I think I'm not. It's a little Music- too sporadic. I'm not, yeah, and I'm not musically talented enough to understand the complexity of what they're playing. Yeah, it, I, I, I agree with you. Like, I love and respect it, but I, I can't listen to them for like, I can't listen to a lot of them. Yeah, I pepper my playlist maybe with a song or two. Yeah, like, and I, I respect the shit out of the musicianship, and I love them as musicians. But I'm just like. I'm I'm with you. It's not necessarily my cup of tea as well. Yeah. Um I'm more into the other other thing. Yeah, me too. A lot um, of other things. <laughs> but yeah, dude. Um so do you before we get into things, did you want to yeah or nay? I think so. Okay. I think so. On that one, I'll re- I got over here my notes also. So as usual, we have a theme you know, whether it comes in at 15 minutes, 35, 45, <laughs> you'll never know. But it's coming. We will. Yeah. Right now is the theme. But so wow. basically today's episode, since it is the new year, we wanted to reintroduce ourselves yeah. um, for a lot of new listeners and just people in general because people change. Okay. I'm different. No. So um, before I go on my little bin, uh, my rant, my binge, I'm already planning to eat. So. Look at that. <laughs> I'm like, food. We've been doing that. Food. Oh, dude, some tacos sounds good right now. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I know it seems kind of lame, but I wanted to. This was my idea, so if anyone thinks it's stupid, you can totally point the finger at me. There you go. But I wanted to kind of like, mostly when we were, were going to reintroduce, it was just going to be uh, the, the project. But I'm like, you know, let's just reintroduce ourselves, too. So yeah. we can kind of just, you know, it's it's about us, too. This whole thing, we, we say this, we always go back to it. But it's like, you know, it's our, we're guiding the ship, but we're also, like, on the ship. You yeah. Know, we're swabbing the deck. We we definitely, we won't put out some information that we're not willing to try ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. I we're, think that's very, that's the one thing also y'all need to remember as you hear this project. It's not like, yeah, we can talk nonsense and shit, but we're also trying this ourselves, dude. Yeah. Like the Mariko minimum list. Um, like I listened to an episode over and over again. And like, I catch myself now as I'm looking at stuff. I'm like, well, has the service purpose? How much happiness is like, I'm yeah. catching. So definitely like I can see myself that, you know, we talk, but we also like, we put in the work ourselves and whatever we share with y'all is something that we are willing to try ourselves as well to an extent. Exactly. And like, you know, we want to, like, make something that works. So it yeah. has to work with us, and then we'll say, hey, give it a shot for yourselves. Yeah. But do you want to yeah, take so the reins there? Let, let me, so I guess let me introduce myself to those who, I mean, thank you for those who haven't listened to us for a while. Thank you very much. Um, if you just started listening to us. Um, once again, my name is Danny, um, or Daniel, whatever. I, it's kind of weird calling me Danny. You can just call yourself Danny. I can, I think I'm going to call myself Danny. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like Daniel's like you're going to go off to war or something. <laughs> Daniel Daniel went off to war and never came <laughs> back. Um, <laughs> Danny. Um, I also, so I know, I fucking hate um, when I introduce myself as Daniel. Because you always have a fucking jerk out there going, oh, daniel son. Like, oh, yeah, Karate Kid, bro. Yeah, I never heard that one in my fucking life. Really? People still do that? You know, every now and then. Not necessarily. Like, I feel uh, like the younger crowd doesn't anymore. My aunt still calls me Daniel. So but but it's okay. Oh, is it an aunt. older person joke? It's the older oh, person. It's an old gotcha, man's that, joke. That makes sense. That yeah. Makes sense. My aunt calls me that, but she's my aunt, and I love her, so I'm not going to get mad at her. She's in a time capsule. She's yeah, in 1985. She's, she, she's she's an 80s child. She has the freaking perm. She got the Aquanet. Oh, she, she, she doesn't think she aged. No, she got the freaking bike neck. Aquanet. <laughs> she got the pics to prove that she was from the 80s. Um, But, yeah, my name is Danny. I'm a... Uh, <laughs> I am thirty seven year um a thirty seven year old um educator. Um I work with high school kids. Um been doing that for as of twenty twenty one slash twenty two, about ten years already. Um my obsessions include music, obviously. We we love music. Definitely. Uh soccer, but not just soccer limited, but also sports. Mm-hmm. Um 
and all things that I find super interesting, but maybe not interesting to everybody. Cause like, I love Star Wars. I love like geeking shit. I love geeking shit out. Like I was watching, funny story. I was watching the, um, the Beatles, let it be documentary two minutes into a documentary, not maybe even a fucking minute. I paused it. I turned to my partner and I'm like, you know, that's, that's not the real Paul McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> like one minute into it is she is she did she privy to anything of that she was like what the fuck you're talking about oh nice and i'm like so i explain it i explained it to her and like i think she she's she's heard about the conspiracy theory right but i was like oh no this is what happened and so like two or three minutes later watching it, i kind of look over and she's on her phone and she's watching the conspiracy <laughs> like she's reading about it and i'm like huh She's like, dude, they're just obsessed with death. Like, yeah. like, like any other musician. I'm like, true. But why do you always reference a car accident? And why do you, you bring little things about Paul McCartney? And That's she's like, true. And I, I don't know. We're not going to get into that conspiracy theory right now. But again. But this is who you are, too, though. This is a prime example of all things nerdy. And now a, a lot of people. Like. Think, yeah. Like, dude, we have an episode where we went on for like 30 minutes about like guitar pedals. Yeah, and I still think we didn't do enough of that. <laughs> I, the world still needs, bro. My little brother gave me a new guitar, a new pedal board. Uh huh. Fucking huge case, and I'm like, bro, like this is hella big compared to my rig. So, my only logical explanation is to buy more pedals to fill it up. To fill it up. That's exactly what you should do. I'm, I'm probably never gonna use every single pedal, but you know what? I like having the option. You need delay. Oh, I need like two different delays. Yeah, some you need more dis distortion, some reverb. Get a reverb because it's weird, and then, <laughs> and then get like a chorus. I have a nice chorus. Oh, but okay, I can, you got uh, a but, chorus. But you know what? I like having options of chorus. It doesn't necessarily have to be one chorus pedal. Get a filter one. A little flanger. Yeah, action. Ooh, yeah, flange would be cool. You know what? You know I've been fucking around with. Oh, I've been. Thinking about getting um, orange has this really cool stomp pedal, mm. um, and I, I think it's called like I I, it's, I think it's called the stomp. And basically, you just connect that straight into like a cab, and it emulates the like an orange pedal, like an orange head, mm -hmm. but you have it like in the pedal board. And it's just like I was playing around with it at Guitar Center, and it sounds so fucking good, dude. Really, I, that's crazy. It's like hundred and eighty, maybe two hundred bucks. It's not bad. And I'm like, dude, I need to get that. And then, of course, if I'm going to have one for my guitar rig, might as well get one for my bass rig also. Yeah. I ha The thing is, I have space. I got real estate. And I got to fill it up. Yeah. <laughs> you can't have an empty house. No. You got to put furniture in there. No, I need to. So yeah. Put paintings on the wall. Thanks, Chato. Your little, your, oh, shit. Thanks, R Rossetti, Colt. Thank you. Uh, What's this fucking musician name? Trump Boy 95 Um. Your your fucking pedal board is gonna cost me thousands of dollars in pedals. So thank you. But a lifetime of memories, and noise, and noise, lots Ooh, of noise. Fuck yeah, loud noise. Ooh, you know what? You should get an EQ. I have a little mini EQ for oh, my bass. Oh, damn! You already have a bunch of stuff. But I feel like <clears throat> I can get more. That's the option. You, oh, though. you can always get more, and now you can look for at boutique stuff. Like on Reverb, look at some boutique <sighs> pedal fucking companies. Fucking Walgris, freaking. Like Earthquaker devices. Oh, or, God. Or um, there's underground ones, too. There's yeah. like, um, I follow this guy in Oregon. Oh, man, I forgot what they're called. Terrible. You know what this, I'm, I'm mostly excited now that I can have my fuzz pedals all connected at the same time. And I can oh, put yeah. my swollen pickle, which is a huge. I mean, and I don't know why they like it's the smallest pedal. It's a fucking huge pedal, and I can also put my big muff also in there. So I can put both of those motherfuckers, and I can just switch. Oh, dude, dude, that'd be nice. Oh God, you know you know options. You, could, you know what you could do too. I think they're stereo pedals, right? Uh huh. You could hook them up to one, one on the left side and one on the right side. <laughs> oh shit, dude! You could switch between. One side will sound more muffy, and one side will sound more, more fuzzy. fuzzy. Oh, God. Damn. I can't. Yeah. You know, and that's why people do the delay, the stereo delay, because it'll ping pong between the speakers. Yeah. That's just tight. Uh, the possibilities. Oh, yeah. Oh, my, now, my pocket is hurting right now. Yeah, just you're going to need, and you're going to need more basses. 
So, yeah, but see, this is what you need though, because if you're a touring person, you need a you need yeah. a pedal board. Well, I already have two bass. I already have two basses. Um, I have one electric guitar. I I'm always keeping an eye out for another like electric guitar for no fucking reason. But yeah. turns out my partner, check this out, dude. I just found out that my partner has a Squire Tom DeLong, um, guitar. Really? Like from the early 2000, the wow. 2000 Squire, you That's know, the, cool. the Fender. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it's black on black fucking mag- n- hasn't been touched. It's just black on black. It has the invader pickups, you know, the white one, um, on the bridge position on the bridge and the back, it has a Tom DeLong um, plaque and I'm seeing it and I'm like, I just got myself a new guitar. Just, that's my guitar now. She doesn't know that, but that, that is my guitar That's now. Hilarious. So my band is actually going to practice and like um on Sunday. Today's Friday, so we're going to practice on Sunday. I haven't practiced since we recorded, so I'm, Dude, that's awesome. Might end up taking it, but yeah, that's that's who I am. Sorry, that's who I am. Coop, who the fuck are you? Who the fuck am I? I don't know. I woke up this morning and I forgot too. No, I luckily I wrote this yesterday, so I read it and I remembered. Mm-hmm. I'm a 33-year-old stoner dad who loves, whose loves and obsessions include music, guitar, and stand-up comedy. So, I kind of made it like it was a dating profile. Yeah. As, as you can clearly see. Um, I just wanted to point out a few things, though. Like, I obviously got to put music in there. Guitar was always a thing, but it's becoming more of an obsession because... I'm going back to my roots and playing a lot more, practicing more, and enjoying, enjoying the instrument again. Like, yeah, I eventually want to, you know, like start writing again. I'm just been dabbling, practicing, and having fun, and then I want to start like putting things together again. You know, I think that would be fun. So mm-hmm. that's my goal with that. And you know, smoking weed is fun. Um, that's good. That's never going to really change. So I take breaks from that every once in a while. Mm-hmm. And um, stand-up comedy, man. Like, it's gotten me through some of my darkest points. It's been something I enjoy even in my highest points. Mm-hmm. And uh, every night I watch stand-up. Um, last night we had such a great night. Me and Steph, we played a board game, which we never do that. Like, it's so fun to, like, just go back to your roots of, like, fun shit. Yeah, simpler stuff. Like date kind of shit. Yeah. You know? And it's just like, man, you're enjoying things. You're like competitively enjoying s- someone's company. And like, I feel feel like there's very few things as valuable as that because it's an active thing you're enjoying with someone. Mm-hmm. It's not just like watching a movie together. I'm not shitting on that, but it's a lot more act. You know, it's an, a more active. Um, It's a more active activity. I don't know. I think also, dude, what I notice is like the more comfortable you are with with a person, the more you kind of stir away from like movies and TV shows. Like, yeah, I'm not saying I'm I'm never doing that again, but like I catch myself, like uh, on my Oregon trip, I catch myself where like I was reading, and you know we were we were in the same room and we're reading, and it wasn't even like. We were talking to, we're both like just reading your own books, our own books and stuff. Yeah. And it was just like sipping on wine, mm-hmm. you know, with like the heater on because it was fucking freezing. And it was so like relaxing. There was no need to entertain the other person. It was just every, like we gave ourselves our space, even mm-hmm. though in the same place. And that, and I feel like once you reach a certain level of comfortableness, yeah, I, I feel like that's where you will see. And then it's yeah. like most of the time that's great. But then sometimes it's nice to go back and do activities together, you know, because, I mean, I feel like that, like, everyone needs to unwind with themselves every night. Yeah. I personally do. So I totally understand what you were saying. It's like separate but together. Um, do you ever play the um, out, the out-of-state license plates game with uh, with Steph? No, what's that shows? one? Like, you know, when you're you driving and you guess see, what it is? Yeah, like, and you see, like, an Oregon fucking license plate and you kind of, like, punch no, I haven't done that one, but that's fun. Yeah, I um, I can't do that with my partner. Why she's too good? No, I catch myself being a little bit too competitive. 
Oh, you, you hit her. You hit her a little too hard one day, huh? Uh, no, it's just I won't even like <laughs> let her. Like, at first it was it was oh, like you just you just now you're just berating. Yeah, it was like she fucked up because I wasn't keeping track, but she fucked up. She's like, oh, it's five to two. I'm winning. It's five to two. And as soon as she said that, boom, I'm like, okay, fuck you then. Oh, you want to fucking play? We're fucking playing and it's fucking on. And um, that shit turned really dark really quickly. Definitely turned to like seven to five, eight to five to a part where we just, um, we, we can acknowledge that we cannot play with each other anymore because uh, I get too competitive. To a point like any, like car, any car passing by and I'm already like this. <laughs> like, Hey, you know how like a boxer, you're like just on the side with a speed bag, <laughs> Ooh. getting warmed up. Ooh, oh hell yeah, I did. No, but you got a um, robe on. And then she also was like, "Oh, we also do." She's like, "Oh, my brother and I, we also do this one every time we see a Dutch Brothers, we punch each other. So anytime we'll pass by like, uh, like a shopping center, <laughs> I, I was already like this. I was already like looking for it, and she's like, stop, stop.' You're in the valley, and you're just like." <laughs> That's exactly what I was doing. 99 is not your lucky day today. <laughs> I think I told her we're in back of L, and I'm thinking like, ooh. Oh, oh. Ready? I'm like, ooh. I can smell it off the freeway. I'm like, ooh, in about five <laughs> minutes, we're going to pass the shopping center. <laughs> and ooh. all you're going to know, all you're going to smell is this knuckle. And I can just feel <laughs> like her inside, you rise, and she's like, Sweat. fuck you, fuck you. And I'm like, I'm bullshitting. I don't know if there's one there, but I'm just bullshitting yeah. her. And she's like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Yeah. Um, so you know we can craving. I'm really craving some Dutch bros, right? You could tell her that. Yeah. You know, so I can not tell her. So no games while we're driving. Because no of, fucking reindeer games, Danny. Apparently um, I'm too competitive. Allegedly. Allegedly. <sighs> so we, that was, we, we introduced ourselves and, and, and geez, a lot of ands. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a lot of coffee this morning cause I drank a lot of coffee on the trip and yeah. I ended up. It was almost like a cleanse type of uh, digestion for me. So I'm kind of like staying off coffee for a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's just, it was a purge. I love coffee. but No, I love it. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, look, I got to get through an hour of the show. I'm not going to, you know. Yeah. So that was us. And mm-hmm. then we wanted to reintroduce the show as well because, you know, we, we did start the show on, on a, a certain light in our lives. And um, sometimes that light might change a little. But yeah. Um, for me, the subject of the show, I kind of wanted to come up with a funny tagline. So I thought it was funny to say mental health coaching from everyday Jose's, like everyday Joe's. Yeah. But it was a play on words because Danny's Mexican and I and I pretend to be Mexican. Mm-hmm. And then we do know a couple of Jose's in our lives. We do. Mm-hmm. And I feel like most people, <laughs> it's a pretty common name, Yeah, it's right? a pretty common name. But, you know, we're everyday Joe's, you know, like kind of like what you were saying just earlier, like. It's it's not just um, it's not just oh, okay we're reading a book and then we're saying do this, no we're actually like applying what we're mm-hmm. doing and then trying to say hey look, it's an option you know we're just giving people options it's good to have options in life yeah you know especially when you're you you're constantly at a crossroads with yourself, or in real in, in an actual situation, it's not even figurative it's literal. And, you know, you got to make a decision. And sometimes your your negativity is going to make you feel like you need to choose one thing. You just need to get rid of that shit, you know? Yeah. Sometimes I feel, and I'm guilty of this, I care way too much about what other people are going to think about what I'm about to do. Yeah. I, I need to stop doing that. Yeah. No, same to you. I know what's right. I know what's wrong. I just need to do what I want to do. And I'm not, and I'm not a sociopath, and I'm not any of that. So I, sh- I should just be able to do what I want to do and not be worried. Like, why am I stressing that I'm gonna hurt someone's? Like, who cares? Like, they'll get over it. That's what apologies are for. And if someone has a problem, that's why they need to be outward and say, "Hey, you know, I didn't appreciate that." Mm-hmm. There you go. I mean, we're all adults. Main thing is, is main thing we really got to do is just communicate. I want to improve my communication. Yeah, so I think that's part of it, is being a little more upfront. Not necessarily being abrasive, but cutting the fat on the on the conversation a little. Like, hey, you know, I really just want this, and and I feel like because people get lost in the in the color of the conversation, sometimes you got to kind of be a little more direct to get your point across. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I, I I think um, just to piggyback on the last part you're saying, like we you 
sometimes we we don't really necessarily say how we 100% feel out of like um you know fear of like coming off as an asshole like you're saying like oh what what people would think of me but sometimes you know you have to be clear you have to be direct um and just speak your truth dude yeah um because if you don't you know shit can be taken can be like misinterpreted and might create more problems down the line um and and yeah dude just again to piggyback on like we he, this in this podcast we we tell you all like hey this is what we you know what we found out this is what we're doing like like yeah every time i i'm feeling my anxiety you know getting up there like yeah dude i legit go on and take you know i do my breathing exercises i go for a walk right you know i you know, I stopped drinking so much coffee and maybe switch over to non-caffeinated tea. Right. Tea. You know? I like switching up with tea. Yeah, I like switching up. Because oh. tea doesn't give you the shit problem. No. Stre- bro, stress tea? That's just fucking delicious. Is that the brand or it, is that the type of tea? Um, it's the type of tea. Type of tea. I'll look into that. Uh, but fuck. I, I'll show you. I'll send you a picture. Stress tea. Yeah. I, I can't forget who makes it. I can't remember who makes it, but it's called stress tea. And my, my good friend, Daryl Lopez... Um, so our good friend Daryl Lopez uh, turned me on to that. So I like it. Started drinking it. Tastes delicious. Also at night, um, because I've been scratching a lot as you know right. before I go to sleep, and I was told that that's a that's a form of self harm. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I guess I gotta come clean and tell you all that I've been self harming myself for this past couple of months um unknowingly but yeah. yeah it makes sense because sometimes i like i scratch and you're breaking yeah. your skin and shit so it is a, a form but whenever i feel too stressed out or like uncomfortable or feeling anxious i start scratching um so i i do that especially at night because i feel like my scratching problem kind of flares up at night so i've been drinking that before sleep and it's been fantastic and introduce it to my dad my dad fucking loves it also so um for anybody out there stress tea i i i strongly suggest it's like five or six bucks for a packet of like 24 but of like 24 packages like at a target but i'm pretty sure you can get some we'll, we'll post a picture of it yeah i'm gonna check that out too because i i think everyone has like nervous mm-hmm. like ticks and and um yeah let alone something like that for sure but yeah we definitely we just don't present we're also advocates of of our show and mental wellness. So of course we're also like trying this stuff for our own well being as well. But getting back to what our show is, I put something a little bit different. I say we're we're two friends and we're now on the journey to let everyone, specifically men, know that it's okay to not be okay. Right. Like and we talked about this in several different shows where like we're brought up in a very like Mask, toxic masculinity like you don't talk about your feelings you, you instead you drink it you you sh- express it through violence or something and right and just now you know recently now now there were adults you know it's okay not to be okay dude it's okay to feel like shit it's okay not to be 100 percent of everything and i think that's one thing i i think that's one of our goal for shows like hey it's okay not to be okay and just if anything, just know that us too, we're not okay. And we're here. Like, we're here to let you know that it's okay. Yeah. Because I want to just be... I've been watching a lot of, like, inspirational things. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a guy named Dan Pena. Okay. Um, He's pretty brutal. But he's good. He's good. He's brutal in the, his, his words and his imagery, but everything he says is, like, true. Basically, he's telling you, like, cold hard facts about what you need to do to be successful in life, not just in business, but as a person. Have you, have you heard of a guy named David Goggins? No, I haven't. He's kind of similar to that, too. He's, like, an inspirational figure, like a military, ex-military kind of guy, um, really fit. But he, he, like, motivates you, too. It's not just, like, exercise. It's, like, kind of, like, pumps you up, you know? Okay. It's, like, in a way, like, I guess you could say a more... Like a Tony Robbins, but more like, f- like a, a little more like, I don't want to say macho, but it's more like masculine. 
So not that Tony Robbins isn't masculine, but it's focusing on like empowerment of like the man. So you know, like, a a Tony Tony Robinson giving you the halftime speech. Exactly, exactly. Same kind of intensity. Just kind of gets you motivated. Like yeah. it speaks to me. Like I, I sure. I mean, I like meditation. Um, there's a time and a place for it, but it's not going to get me excited. It's not mm-hmm. going to get me pumped. It's putting me in a tranquil state. It's it's soothing. Sometimes I want to get. I want someone to light a fire. Yeah. I want to get pumped. I want to get motivated. That's what gets me excited. That's what gets me creative. Like I need to be emotionally excited. Right. Yeah. So I like sometimes like that, like you just said, that's perfect way to put it. Like there's elevator pitches and that's like a halftime speech. These guys do really good halftime speeches and, and you know, building your psyche up a little, you know, and I'm not, you know, that's definitely not my cup of tea. That's not my thing where they, you know, to get motivated, but like, dude, I always said this about anything. Like, just because it doesn't work for me, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. If it works for you, dude, yeah, fuck yeah, more power to you. Well, I get, I get, I get, I. It all works. I just feel like, just like with music, sometimes you want a certain, you know, you you get a certain pep talk for a certain situation. Like, yeah. you're not always gonna want that pep talk, and you're not always yeah. gonna want like a soothing, calm one. Yeah, like there's moments when you're pissed off, and you're not gonna want someone to come up to you and be like. How do you think they were feeling? Fuck that. You're going to be like, fuck yeah. those pieces of yeah. shit. They fucking almost ran me off the road. Yeah, yeah. Like, you should be angry with me right now. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's what I like. I like the, it's almost like sympathy. Like, you're almost mm-hmm. like, they're they're like, yeah, the world sucks. But you need to fucking, you know, you need to like, do. what are you going to do about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So I kind of like that because it's like, yeah, don't feel sorry for my, I can't feel sorry for myself. I need to take action. Yeah. So it, it helps me not. Like a call to arms. And feel sorry for myself. Yeah, yeah. So I completely understand because, see, you some people that don't respond to that probably because they don't have that voice that's annoying them, and 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 they're probably already doing that, you know. So you're like, I don't need to have you tell me. I'm already mm-hmm. doing it. But for like for me, it's like no, I'm always consciously like pulling myself down. So right. it's nice to work to build myself up, you know. Right. Me, we got to be our own cheerleader sometimes. Well, you have to, dude, because if we don't cheer ourselves up and we don't believe in ourselves, no one, you're not going to let anybody else, like... Well, no one's going to want to believe you either. Exactly. Right? Like, I can tell you all this million shit about how awesome you are, but unless you believe it yourself, it's just words. Yeah, and it just sounds like you're buttering me up. Exactly. Yeah. It, or lying it's, to it's me. Sim- yeah. And that... That was one of my biggest struggles. Like, that was one of my, it still is one of my biggest struggles. Like, anytime they tell me about, like, my career, like, oh, dude, you're such a good educator. Like, nah, nah, dude, nah. Like, you play it down. And and we had this conversation before, like, and I guess it's like the imposter syndrome. Yeah. You know, it's just like, nah, dude, nah. Like, we, like, we started the show, like, oh, yeah, I guess we're audio engineers. I don't know. I'm like, if you really think about it, like, no, we've been doing this shit collectively for over 20, almost 30 years collectively. Yeah, and professionally for a few years. Yeah, professionally for a few years. Exactly. And like, yeah, we don't, maybe we don't believe it, but we definitely know what the fuck we're talking about when it comes to like. I'll show you my taxes. <laughs> all right. You want to see that? You want to see my fucking forms, dude? I'll show you my fucking resume. I'll yeah, show you my portfolio. I'll show you my birth certificate. <laughs> I got it. Stop asking me to vote. <laughs> San Bernardino, homie. Yeah, San Bernardino. I'm gonna start doing that. That's a f- dude. That's I'm smart. telling you, dude. And it's not that I don't want to sign up for it. Just I don't got time. I'm not, going to a fucking store. See, I'm such an attention whore. Like I would have went the felon route, but then, the, but then they could be like, "Well, was it a violent crime?" Like I don't think they'd say that. <laughs> like why would they ask that? <laughs> hey, is it non-violent? Are you on probation? They like Coop, they know about it. Coop, I think it'll be fucking hilarious. Like, oh, I'm a DACA recipient. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna pull that one next time. I'm gonna be like, oh, I'm a DACA recipient, bro. I can't vote. That's funny. Yeah. Oh. God. Oh yeah, but just I'm gonna maybe we should Google excuses and then just go through a roll of decks hey, of them. Listeners, what is your excuse not to do? Not to necessarily not to vote, but what's your good excuse not to sign up for like those pe- petitions and shit like that, dude? Yeah. Like, what is you know that's this is all what gets you out of the supermarket. And into your car. Because it ain't always Girl Scouts stopping you. No. God forbid it's the freaking uh, Salvation Army. Oh, dude. Halloween. I go to Didums. 
I'm on my way in there. There's just a dude, Boy Scouts or something, selling fucking popcorn. Of course, which and is always less favorable than the Girl Scouts. Yeah, cookies. and I'm like, I'm all yeah, kid. <laughs> I'm all let let me come back. I'll, I'll I'll hook you up when they came back. You didn't. You you weren't gonna. Go, were you gonna go the uh, the other exit? Well, oh, there's only one exit, so I was kind of <laughs> fucked. <laughs> so I was fucked. Um, but I come back, dude. And I'm like, well, I'm not. I didn't want to fucking lie to this kid because yeah. I don't want to be an asshole. Tell me why a fucking bag of popcorn that you, I I'm pretty sure it's just got the same at Trader Joe's for like four bucks or three bucks. Motherfucker charged me twenty bucks for it, and I'm like twenty dollars for one for a bag of popcorn, and it wasn't even like freshly made. It was like, and I'm like, do you like Venmo? <laughs> you know, like, jeez. And I'm like, God damn Did you it, gift dude. It? I give it to my dad. My there dad. You go. My, I was gonna say you should just gift it. My my dad likes popcorn, so I give it to him. I'm not a just, fan. I'm gonna tell you right now. I agree. I'm not a tin but popcorn guy. I want it fresh. I want yeah. it hot, unless it's kettle. No, even kettle corn hot. Oh, kettle corn hot is the fucking best. But I can do kettle corn when it's not hot. But it can't be like that. It's got to be good packaged popcorn. It can't it, just be shit. I, I just, smart pop's kind of good. I just got myself a um a bag of kettle corn from Trader Joe's, um and it's not bad, yeah, not bad. But yeah, I mean it's freshly popped. Yeah, yeah, it's not the same, bro. Ugh, so good. <sighs> What's your goal? The goal, <laughs> the goal of the popcorn. No, <laughs> the goal. Um, I think the goal of our show. Oh, what's think, what's your goal? My, for the show. Yeah, my my goal that I want to work on this year for this show um, is I really want to talk. You know, we said we want to talk to other people and yeah. like have guests on, and, and I really want to do that. Um, but what I also want to focus with is with ourselves mm-hmm. and the guests. You know, just talk about what makes us stupid, you know, stupid-eyed happy is the way I worded it. Like, mm-hmm. oh, dough and the dough, doughy-eyed about. Yeah. Like, what makes, what's that thing that gets you going, gets you pumped gets you like gives you goosebumps on your arms you know it makes you feel happy you know you get that euphoric joy you Mm -hmm. know whether it's music or whether it's some kind of like live event maybe you go to or maybe it's just going to a library and reading to yourself yeah you know maybe just you get the enjoyment of the tranquility but like i want to find out what what those things are and then i think what we need to do is try and get you know incorporate the goals that are tailored to the pinnacle of our happiness. Like mm-hmm. if, if we know what makes us happy, then what we need to do is incorporate that happiness into our goals and into what we're making our goals towards. So we can get to that point because I think that's, that's the ultimate goal is that pinnacle, right? Yeah. So if we can get to that mountaintop, dude, you know, like we can rappel down if we want, but we can stay up there too, you know, like, yeah. So I just, I'm, I'm thinking like, it's been the theme this whole time. It's like, let's, let's try this out and see how it works. So that's what I'm thinking is, you know, I'm, I'm always obsessing about what I'm upset about or what's dragging me down. I need to obsess about the, the things I like and build on things. Like if I think about, Oh, I had a shitty day at work and I hate my job. I'm just going to keep thinking about that, but I'm not doing anything. So instead just be like, I had a shitty day at work. So I'm going to play guitar for two hours. And by doing that, I felt better and I improved my chops. Mm-hmm. And who knows, you know, doing these things is going to put you in a better headspace. So you're going to, you're probably going to get better sleep. And then you're also going to, at the end of the day, just overall having this aura that's so much more positive, it's going to invite other people. Like people aren't going to be, Oh, you're a wallflower. Oh, you're just someone I don't want to be around. You know, you're going to be giving mm-hmm. off something a little more magnetic, you know? And that's, I think that's what we need as people. We need to be, we need to be, <clears throat> excuse me. We need to be like a little more magnetic with our energy. Like I want to close off a lot because I feel like there's so many annoying ass people out there and I just don't want to be everyone's friend anymore. Yeah. But I also don't want to miss an opportunity to meet someone really awesome. So yeah. it's always kind of like a, a gamble. Oh, geez. Whoa. I'm going through puberty live on air, people. It's happening. It's finally happening. Finally, after 33 years. The ball's years. dropping. I'm coming <laughs> home. All right. 33 years. Finally. I'm a 33-year-old pubescent boy. Um, God, that got weird. And, yeah, so those are my... 
You know what's my biggest fears, Coop? Sometimes like that I turn into a no. Uh, sometimes one of my biggest fears is like while I'm yelling at my students or something for like for them fucking up, and I'm just like giving to them. I'm over here freaking <clears> being <throat> hell, in my mind being hell inspirational. Like the only reason I push you because you have so much potential. You know all this shit. Yeah. My biggest fear is my voice cracking, and then that's it. Like everything <sighs> I just build upon just. Oh, it'll just it, crash. It, <laughs> In, in, in a high school setting? Oh, it's over. It's over. It's over. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. In the coop. That would be the worst. That would happen to me. I always have, whenever I get nervous, I'm not nervous right now. That's because yeah. my throat was dry. Yeah, yeah. Whatever excuse I want to use. But, but no, dude, when I would get nervous, oh, oh. that would always happen. I'd be like, huh. I'd be like <laughs> Peter Brady or something. <laughs> so bad, dude. No, dude. It's never going to change. No, but I'm like, I'm yelling at my students sometimes. I'm like... You know, you have expectations, Ex- you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, in back of my head, I'm, I'm, as I'm yelling, I'm like, don't, don't crack, yeah. don't crack, yeah, don't yeah, crack, yeah. don't crack. Because imagine, like, 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 um, you have what? <laughs> you know, like one of those? Game over. Yeah. Game over. You're like the dude from I Love You, Man. Here we go, Galaxy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd fucking <laughs> never go to a game with that guy. Oh God! Uh, sorry, Coop. Did you have anything else to finish up? No, I I think that's pretty much it. I just wanted to, um, you know, real quick, just find that thing that makes us happy, and then tailor our goals towards getting to that pinnacle of happiness. I, I like think that. I think that's something to. That's a nice goal for the year. There's nothing wrong with keeping the happiness high going for the longest possible. Exactly. Main maintenance. Yeah. Um, I think the my goal for this show, uh, for this coming year, twenty twenty two, um, is to bring in more listeners, of course, and to create a more inclusive and interactive community for mental support, you know, via online, having guests come in, just interacting with people. I feel like um one of the good things about podcasting in my podcasting career for the past three or four years already, four years maybe, I don't know, fuck, I lost count. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. Um, the four years, not that you lost count. Okay. <laughs> the four years is the um, the sense of community you built with, with your listeners and with other podcasts, you know. Um, I feel like that is one of my favorite things about these type of projects and about these, you know, this sort of art that we do, um, or entertainment that we provide to people is the community based and like hearing or interacting with people you never really, you don't even know. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're like, Hey dude, when you said this or when Coop said this or like this fucking hit home. Yeah, that well, that's always a good feeling, and it's always and it's just like it validates us. It validates tells from the head on on what we're doing, and also validates us. Validates our feelings are valid, and th- we're being heard and understood. But also validates the listener who's like, "Fuck, this is how I feel." Somebody else feels the same way, and mm-hmm. I I feel like that feels so good sometimes it's something you need to listen um like I, I once i was in reddit and i was i was reading articles and i read a title that said it sucks breaking up with somebody that you love but you know they're not the, the right person for you mm-hmm. and i'm like fuck like that i like i can relate to that so many times like as you know i i can re- I, at the time i could relate to that and it stood out to me the most. It's like, fuck, I felt validated. Mm-hmm. And, of course, like, knowing I wasn't the only one and made me feel a bit better. Like, okay, I understand what's going on and I understand I'm not the only one. So it doesn't it doesn't feel as bad. And I think that sometimes this is why we're so afraid to, like, voice our opinion or we're so afraid to show our true selves because like you said earlier, we focus sometimes so much on what our image is going to be or what other people are going to think of us. So whenever we voice our opinion or we do something, we're afraid that you're going to be singled out mm-hmm. and people will not understand it. And 
and this is one cool thing about this project and my vision for this is you know creating this interactive community is that it it's like a support system mm -hmm. for us and you know sure you can go to a professional i, I mean we recommend you go to a professional don't listen to yeah, us definitely for your fucking professional advice but it's a good starting point for at least for support system for like understanding that we will listen to anybody problems or we will listen to anybody. We'll have a conversation with anybody um, because we all have been there. And sometimes people don't want to be lectured. Sometimes people just want to get it out like and be, be heard. Listened, be heard. Yeah. And I think that's what one really cool thing about this project is that we're forcing people to hear us. Yeah, we're definitely, and that's beautiful. Like that's really I, I what I like too about it was to was that you said um it's like a platform like it, it's it's a it's a segue almost like some people are uh, it, therapy is a very it's still a very taboo mm -hmm. thing because it, it is incorporated it's synonymous with failure mm -hmm. it's synonymous with weakness um it's synonymous with psycho with psychosis mm -hmm. um it's synonymous with a lot of negativity. Uh, I personally also have a negative stigma attached to it. So I, that's why I completely understand. And I still can tell you right now, I've never actually gone and so seek, I've never seek professional help. Mm -hmm. um, I've been interested in it. And I thought about like, oh, you know what? I, I should go and get it checked out. And I still do want to try it. I just haven't gone about doing it. But so I, I just, I completely relate and understand to that person who's like, I don't necessarily want to go, you know, this is something that's, it's casual, you know, you can come in here, you can tap in, you can mm -hmm. s watch us, you can listen, you can, when you're conveniently available, you know, not, this isn't like, oh, you make a schedule. I get to the point where therapy is like, you need to commit to it. And that's why there's a schedule. But let's be honest, man. Some people are working their asses off right now. They don't have, they got kids too. How, how are you going to get a babysitter so you can go for an hour to go? You can't do that for yourself. So sometimes, mm -hmm. and like Danny said, we're not professionals. Yeah. But if this just gets you through the day and you can laugh and we can get through the day together, then I think that's what we're doing. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and, and we're just here to provide insight, information, and of course, further resources if people want to read up on whatever we're talking about. I, yeah. think, I think that's the main goal, like almost like a liaison for, for mental wellness, mm -hmm. you know, like... We're doing things, but if you really want to check it out, you should go and look into it yourself and, of course, figure out what your insurance provides. See, that's what I don't like about the yeah. mental health is that you go, oh, I'm not in that network or this is what I have, you know, and that's why there's the this online stuff, which I also have not looked into. I'm, I think, you know, what would be interesting is maybe what I should do is sign up for one of those, like, apps and maybe just kind of, like, do a journal of how it goes and yeah. what the experience is like. And then, especially since I've never really gone through therapy, mm -hmm. maybe I could bring this to the table and then we can talk about, like, you know, compare, compare a little of, like, what the uh, professional therapy session is versus the online app that is becoming more and more popular with, I've noticed podcasts are dropping their names a lot. I, I think also excuse me for forgetting what their name is, but um but just to piggyback what you said, I think people find more um comfort on the online situation because it's very similar to like online dating. You don't have to like you have that protection or you have that wall yeah. mm -hmm. to still stay anonymous, to yeah. not show your face, not be the person who who you would um um normally would be. So like you're saying, like I have all this stigma against this like this sort of medicine, you know, going to therapy and shit. Like this is now your 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 chance to do it on your own time and your own terms and in a way like kind of secret mm -hmm. where you don't have to you know if you don't want to share with your partner like oh i'm going off to therapy you know you're just doing it on your own um you don't have to go you know the worries of running into somebody or anything like that not saying that therapy is bad 
because it's not. I think it's an amazing tool. But if you grew up with this stigma on it, of course, you're, you know, like if you're thinking, if you grew up thinking that therapy is for failures and now you're seeing like you might need some therapy, like, well, fuck, I'm a fucking failure. Mm-hmm. You know, so rather than doing that, you're just kind of like it still gives you a liberty to kind of keep it private. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like. It's almost like a free trial. I like, like that. I mean, you might be paying for the app, but it's almost like you're trying you're on your segue into therapy. Like, OK, I'm, I'm going to put my foot in the pool before I jump in. Right. So that's all like super important, you know, and I think. It's it's not about cold turkey. It's not about just jumping in um, and doing a plunge with your mental well-being. I think this is something we got to build and work towards, you know, because the main thing we got to remember is it's not even just about, like, how much you get at once. It's about building a routine, you know? Yeah. You got to have a routine of mental wellness. You can't just be like, oh, I'm taking three days off. I'm going to work my ass off. No, every day you got to work at it. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to find a way to do something because if you don't, it's just going to, it's just going to boil over, you know, yeah. and no matter what kind of person you are, everyone has their way of expressing that. Um, and no matter what, it is not fun. So I think that's awesome. I think with all that being said and done, I think we've got one hell of a good year coming our way. Hopefully, you yeah. know. I mean, I'm, you know, obviously we're going to be playing by the government's rules and doing what we got to do as citizens here in the United States of America, mm-hmm. but it ain't going to change what we do. Listen, um, and at the end of the day, we're going to be here. We're here, here as in me and Coop for each other, but also for our listeners and all our friends. We're here to experience the highs together and to experience the lows together as well. And we will be up there cheering you when you're in your highs and we will be up here to pull you back up for your lows. Yep. That's I that's my promise to you, Coop, this year. Yeah. And I and I and I agree. I'll do the same for you, dude. Handshake for we gotta, and see. We gotta like uh we'll do it for the we'll do like politics. We do the high handshake and then they the photo op? Are you this camera over here? <laughs> one thirteen, that'll be the photo. <laughs> one thirteen's the photo. Oh god. We Oh, why do you do this? Because <laughs> it's so good. I know. We're freaking ridiculous. It, you know, sometimes. and for those of the people that are watching, most of the people I know listen. Yeah. And we get the same amount of people that usually watch that listen. But I, I you know, it's just this is an added bonus of watching. Yeah. Our, our stupidness. Otherwise, uh, it's just like, what are you doing? Our stupidness alone. Well, well before we wrap it up, um, since. If you if you've been following us, you know that Coop and I we love our fucking music, and and yes, we listen to every type of music. We'll admit it, but we like to gravitate to that with guitars, distorted sound, a little bit of screaming. Sometimes we verge a little bit off from it, but yeah. that's our that's our foundation. That's pretty much like my partner said. Um, funny, um, we were listening to one of the bands that we we're about to do. Well, I was listening, and she's like, "Hey, do you listen to anything that was like made after 2013?" And I'm like, "Well, actually, this album came out in 2021, so fuck you, you know, yeah. kind of, kind of thing." But we 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 like to stick to like a specific platform and specific type of music. So, since we are yes, we're mental wellness podcast, we but music is such a huge part for us. We decided to do our top five songs of 2021. Yep. In no particular and order. No particular order, and these are each our top five. So I will be putting together a Spotify playlist of the top ten mm. Tales from the Head songs of 2021. Okay. But yeah, take the reins there. Thank you. Me. So again, in no particular order, these are the top, top five songs. Um, and if you listen to the albums, um, most likely also the top, my top five albums of the year in no particular order. Number one, uh, this is by a band called Turnstile. Fucking amazing album to put out this year called Glow On. Um, the, they started like an, uh, you know, I'm not, that's another episode. But uh, Turnstile and the song's called Wild World. And it's fucking amazing. And that's off their new one, the, the, pink, re- the pink record, yep, right? It's called Glow On. Awesome. And then um, number two, in no particular order, this is from one of my favorite bands, Angels and Airwaves. 
um, with their album that came, that came out this year called Life Form. The song's called Restless Souls. Um, fucking amazing song. Number three, Fiddlehead. I can't remember what the um, album name is. But one of my favorite albums from this um, from this year, um, if not my D favorite album of the year, um, and the song's called The Years. Number four, a fucking podcast favorite, Knock Loose. Hell yeah. Fucking amazing band. And I really, really love the song God Knows. Yes. Just the riffs, just the freaking anger in it. Oh. Because <sighs> um, – this one is a tear in the fabric of life. Am yes. I, am I right? Yes. Okay, cool. That's the one. That was a killer EP. Oh, fucking killer EP. And if you still haven't watched even like, if you still haven't gone over to YouTube and watched their like EP 25 video minute. of the visual stimulus. Yeah. Oh, fucking amazing. I mean, look, R. Kelly's gone, right, guys? So we, <laughs> trap in the, who, who doesn't remember be living. Trapped in the Closet? You cannot be right? living Trapped in the Closet so, anymore. So now we got knocked loose. Now, okay. What you love from the 25-minute R. Kelly music video, you can love with a 25-minute death metal hardcore video. Yes. Because how would you categorize that genre? It, it is definitely like death metal hardcore. Yeah. But, cause, and, I, and I specifically pick God Knows. Because it gives me a little essence of Slipknot in there. I don't know how, mm. but like that, not only this song, but the whole uh, a turn in the fabric of life, it gives me essence of Slipknot. Like, I know, I know why. I, I think because it's the imagery you get from the music, like it's very carnivaly, like very scary to the point where it's almost like freak show, like like I, it's taking you somewhere in your mind. Yeah, right. And that's yeah. how Slipknot used to feel when I was a kid. Yeah. I was like, man, this is frightening the shit out of me. I love it. It, it was like a Dream Ring Circus Carnival, f like scary ha fun house, like so much layers of shit going on yeah. at the same time. Um, fucking amazing. But number five, and it might be a shameless plug, but you know what? God damn it. I'm proud of what we did, and I'm proud of what we accomplished as a band. Number five, in no particular order, the band's called California Crush, which is the band I'm in. I'm the bass player, and I'm also one of the vocalists for this band. And the song, I went with a first track from our EP called EP Numero Uno. Um, and this is California Hates You. That's a great song. And and I and the reason I picked this song, dude, is because as a band, when we first started, this was the first song we learned. Mm -hmm. um, when it was just me, Ray, and Augie. And then when we brought in Josue on on guitar, this was also the first song we kind of it, it's just it's always been the first like it's the unifier. We, yeah. Yeah. And when we do it's the first song in our track in our EP, it's the first song we recorded, the first song the first song we we wrote as a band and whenever we start playing shows again or whenever we play a show this is going to be our, our opening track because it's just so fucking badass. It's, it's, you guys got your wings on this song. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's a great representation of what the sound is. The EP, uh, of course, is way different than what the EP version is way different than how we play it. When we play it live, there's so much layers of like. I'm excited then. Of pedals and I shit. I have not heard it live yet. No, I've yeah. I've only really heard the EP version. Like, when we play it live, I know for a fact I'm running EP. My bass was just clean. It was just straight to yeah, an app. Direct. direct, and they give it that, grun that grunty sound. When I play in it live, I'm putting it through a fuzz pedal. Hell it's yeah. It's one pickle, so it gives it that, that grit to yeah. it. Oof. I'm doing it, uh, and then it's running to a chorus pedal, which gives it those nice little shimmy. Yep. And then I have a flanger going on in the background just to create more fucking noise on top of the chaos. But see, I mean, it's just like, it's color that is necessary. Yeah. You know? Um. So, yeah, I'm excited to play this live someday. I'm excited just talking about it. So, if you haven't, uh, I will love if y'all go check out my band called California Crush. Um, And we have three songs. It's like the whole EP is like maybe nine minutes, so... Yeah, tell us what you think about it. Even oh, if yeah. you don't like it, we would not like that feedback, but we are open to adjustments. Any but, publicity is good publicity. And those were my top five in no particular order songs of 2021. What that about was, you? That was a beautiful top five. Thank you. What, I, are, I, what are mine? Let's see. I, I, You know what's funny? I did, when I put this outline together, I had them all in my head. Mm -hmm. And I replaced a couple 
And yeah. I replaced a couple back, but I ended up changing things up a little, which I'm glad I did because I originally had a lot of older songs. And because originally when I told Danny, I said, look, it's the top five, but they don't have to be current songs. They could be like, they could be from 1942, whatever. Yeah. Who the fuck, what is that? Jazz music? Probably jazz. Um, But, you know, it's just whatever made you happy this year, mm-hmm. you know, and... I replaced a couple things because I'm like, there's some songs that made me happy this year that were from this year. And I think that's better because I live in the past with my music a lot. I grew up with classic rock. So it's like, I got to I love new stuff too. And I got to show love to the stuff. So mm-hmm. I mean, everyone knows what's, everyone knows Leonard Skinner's great, but you know, I can't put them every single time. Yeah. So in no particular order, <clears throat> my top five, starting with none other than the last train home ballad version by John Mayer. This song has probably been rotated in my um on my YouTube channel, uh, on my TV, on my Spotify, more than probably a lot of songs this year. To the point as well where I've obsessively watched the guitar solo and I think at one point this year I'm probably gonna try and learn it. It's just it just gave me I haven't heard guitar solos in so long that have made me feel a certain way. And it's normally always classic rock or yeah. some kind of timeless band from the 80s or even 90s, right? But I'm like, I haven't heard something that really struck me. And just it's just, ah, uh, it's beautiful. John Mayer, probably at his best. Um, and right I will now. argue that this is your song of the year because you've been telling me about this song for a while to a point where I, I did check out that Valley verse and yeah. check out that the guitar solo Um at the very end, yeah, it was just like a good two minute solo or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's a it's a burner. And I was actually listening to the album yesterday when I was doing some reading, and um, it's good shit, dude. And it's, I will argue that is her song of the year. I I will I don't I know think you that's too, my song of the year. I but think I'm you're right. Argue that. I think so too. This next one though mm-hmm. is a classic, but I just have I just got hip to it now because sometimes I live under a rock with mm-hmm. my music, and Steph brings me out and shows some R and B. So I've heard of the Force MDs. I know they mess with like Wu-Tang and I've always liked their style, but I never knew the song Tender Love and how good that fucking song was. Holy Mm -hmm. shit. What a great song. To the point where I was on a YouTube hunt to try and find metal bands covering the song because I am weird and I love when metal bands cover adult contemporary hits that I love. So far, no one's covered any of the songs I like by Gloria Stefan, mm-hmm. Madonna, and right now, this Tender Love song. Only thing I could find was black people doing karaoke on YouTube, <laughs> which, by the way, was really good. Yeah. Um, I was like, dude, this is awesome. Like, I was like, dude, this guy is like doing it in his yeah. hotel, li- or his hotel, in his, uh, like his family room. But I'm like, dude, I love it. And then I'm like, I want to do karaoke again. Um, <laughs> then you have to hear your voice. Your singing voice, I'm like, I never want to do karaoke again. Well, that's what's beautiful about karaoke is they got the reverb. They got, you know, it really really hides the shit, which is... You know what we should do? We should do the top, maybe not five songs, but top three songs that we will do in the karaoke night. Ooh. You should jot that one down while I talk about this next one, just because I really like that idea. Let me write it down. Um, Next number three for me is Ghost Shaped People by Lamb of God. This song is off their latest record, which I believe came out in 2020. It may have came out in 2021. Um, It is an amazing song. It has so much melody in it, and I really love the lyrics. And thanks to Spotify, because, look, I'm a metal fan, and I I can kind of decipher lyrics a lot of the time, but I can't pick up everything. So it's great that I can read the lyrics on Spotify and really connect to the music. Yeah, yeah. And I love... I was I was like, man, this is the lyrics. I mean, I love Randy Blythe, but I'm like, man, the lyrics on this song are really deep, and it has one of the best. It goes into this part towards the end of the song where it just sh- completely shuts down and goes to the guitar all by itself, playing the lead-in riff, and then the drums go doon doon, and then it goes right into a breakdown, and it is just the best. I love. I will always love a great breakdown at the end of a song mm-hmm. because of just where we came from with music and the, at the cave and at live shows, at hardcore shows, and just the pit. So I, I'm just from that. Like if you can throw a breakdown in a song, I don't care if it's, I don't care if it's Spice Girls. Like make it work. Um, number four, 
Vanish Canvas by Era. Era became a lot more prominent prominent for me this year when I found out that I knew the that I met knew that I met JTKV from Texas in July yeah. all those years ago, and now he is the lead singer of Era. So I'm like, oh, that's fucking awesome. No wonder I kind of dug the screaming, and then like I love the guitar work. Um, amazing band. Uh, Era is very um, kind of like prog metal, but if you check them out on YouTube, if you're a guitarist, they actually are awesome because the guitarists, both guitarists, will do playthroughs of the songs. No vocals. It'll have the drums and the guitars. Play the whole song. Solos, yeah. everything. And it's a nice closed-up view so you can really see what they're doing. Because tabs are great. But you know as well as I do, like, tabs don't show you slides and technique. I mean, it shows you what a slide is, but you really got to see how they do it. Sometimes a bend, they're using two fingers. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it's, it's it nice does, to know the easy way to get that done. It you doesn't know? show you the the style. Exactly. The style the, or the, the, the swag. Fi- the swag. I like yeah. that. I like Swagger. that. Swagger. Yeah, exactly. Because you, you, it's it. I mean, a solo too. It's all emotion. You're making a guitar cry. Mm-hmm. And then to go back to number one, that's exactly what I was analyzing while I was listening to that guitar solo. Because, like I said, I've been obsessing about it. Because I'm like, what is a guitar solo? You know? Because obviously, I'm smoking weed while I'm thinking about all this. So I'm like, what is a guitar solo? And I yeah. kept thinking, I'm like, well, back in the day, everyone would always say, make that thing cry, right? But if you listen to the best guitar solos, like by Hendrix, by by if you love Clapton or if Iomi or Eddie George, Van Halen, George Harrison, George Harrison, yeah. you know, like those things sound like tantrums, like straight up m- musical tantrums that it's just, it's just the most raw emotion. Like you, you, they're just in their element and that's what blues is. They're, they're, they're so depressed that they're showcasing there's misery in a beautiful way. And that's what I love about that emotional guitar solo is just it's perfect. Oh, man. Let me piggyback on that one, dude. But, yeah, I mean, when I was listening to that ballad version by John Mayer, and we love a good solo. Like, I fucking love Iron Maiden solos. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I think Hollow Be Thy Name has, like, one of the best fucking solos ever. Hello Melodic. Yeah. Nice melody. But, or, like, even, like, Metallica has fucking amazing but like Fade of Black solo, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll take that solo maybe over any Iron Maiden solo. Mm-hmm. But again, because Fade of Black, he's talking about super dark. Yeah, you know it, it's an emotional song. You know, and as you were saying right now, like when you think about the best guitar solo is, like there's something about like. My Guitar Gently Weeps by George Harrison. Oh, Fucking yeah. amazing solo. That is an amazing solo. Uh, same thing with, like, um, um, like Wild Horses by, like... Um, the Stones. Stones. Um, Jimi mm-hmm. Hendrix also had, like, Hey Joe. Fucking amazing guitar mm-hmm. solo. And I think that's what John Mayer did here. It, it was a very Prince-like, Purple Rain-ish type of guitar solo. Yeah, where it's not just let me show you how fucking technical, especially the way it starts. Yeah, very Prince, Damn, very that's, Prince. That's I like that. That's and, very and good. It, and it and it's not a very. I told you, I, I, it's I, hella attitude. It, yes. Yeah, it's got attitude. It, yeah, I, I'm. I was seeing him play, it, and then just the way if you ever see John Mayer doing his expressions when he's playing <laughs> the guitar solo, the word, like cum faces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's always like. He's always got the crooked mouth and one eye goes a little low. And then he got the little, the little little tick on the neck going on. <laughs> Puts a cigarette in his mouth. Finish just going. <sighs> I'm done. How are you feeling? He's all saying. <laughs> well, I'm finished. <sighs> that was amazing. Um, well, exactly though. But um, I feel like it's. I think you fucking nailed it when you're like so much full of emotion. I think that's what that guitar solo hits. And you can talk about like Slayer and fucking all these other metal trash bands having amazing solos, but something about the more feeling to it. Well, and 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 before I do my number five, you mentioned Slayer, and because this is why I favored Jeff Hanneman over Carrie. And this isn't this isn't oh Jeff's better than Carrie. And it never was that. I always felt this way even when Jeff was alive. Mm-hmm. I loved Jeff's style because he was more melodic. Mm-hmm. So if you listen to like the song Seasons in the Abyss, there's always two solos typically in Slayer. Yeah. The the fast whammy solo, That's it's Carrie. Carrie, yeah. 
But what I love is the real arpeggiated, just melodic, me, the melody that is Jeff Hanneman because he just gives you these these chills with his melody because it's it's like you know people say melody and you think like oh it's like a happy thing no melody just means it's a syncopated group of notes that go in the key mm -hmm. you know and 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 those keys are dark in Slayer so it's like he comes up with these melodies and it's just like an opera of of feelings and you're just like it's scary it's pretty it's it's majestic, and it's just like, and that's what I love about, like you said about, like you mentioned Slayer, but it's like, and that's true, but I, that's why I favor Jeff because I, I'm always going to be a sucker for the melody, yeah, the catchiness, always, hundred percent, yeah, always. I mean, that's why I have two pop acts, or not two pop acts, two pop songs on this list. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty heavy list minus John Mayer and the Force MDs, but. But that's my thing. Like everything on this list is emotionally gave me some kind of chill, you know. Um, but number five for me, this is the heavy riffy one. Mm -hmm. This is off Exodus's newest record that came out in 2021, Persona Non Grata. Title track off the record, Persona Non Grata. The riff, the um, kind of similar. Obviously, I love the solo, but Gary Holt, man. His melodies and his shreddiness, he, um, Kirk Hammett was the one who taught him guitar. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we all know Joe Satriani taught Kirk Hammett how to play guitar. So you could argue Gary is in the wheelhouse of Satriani. There's beautiful melodies that Gary can do along with his technical thrash riffage. And let me tell you, holy shit, man, this guy is in his 50s. Persona non grata. They came out with a record in 84. Exodus, I think. They were supposed to release it in 83. And, uh, dude, these guys came out with Metallica. This new record, it sounds like a band that... I mean, it just sounds like these guys are 20 years old. The riff is just heavy. It's fast. It's insane. Like, it's it's everything you want in a thrash band from, from San Francisco. Mm -hmm. The SF... Or, I should say, the Bay. Like, these guys are Bay legends. They're still holding it down. You know, you got your old school singer back, uh, Steve Zetro Souza, and and it's just it's just a match made in heaven with them being just they're on their shit. The drummer is uh, battling cancer, but I believe it's in remission, and um, the band is just tighter than ever. The music is great, and it's just a beautiful time. It was a good year for music. Mm -hmm. It was a really good year for music. Oh and yeah, usually out of out of um, hardships spark the most creative beautiful things we can get yeah looks like that worked out perfectly um <laughs> <laughs> for those who don't know our camera just the temperature once again oh it's so dumb i got, I got a fresh one right here i got another battery oh uh, just gonna finish right here. we're almost done yeah no but just to piggyback on what you were saying um, yeah, like one of the tracks that didn't make it or one of the albums I didn't make it for my top five was Taylor Swift's um uh Evermore came out uh earlier this year, I believe. Um, but also she redid like her, some of her uh she did she redid one of her albums um to more her style and it came out really folky, very fo um like very um melancholy in a way. And like you said, dude, I, I feel like this year was great for music because, you know, we we have so much time. We had so much time in our hands. We had so much juices to create, you know, to create and stuff and just the time to actually create it. So, yeah, I, I strongly believe it was a great year for fucking music this year, dude, um, in all genres. Sorry about that delay. Oh yeah, for those who in the video. Sorry about that. Sorry for that. We're we're gonna figure that out. Uh, Sheila's actually been good about. She's been being better this in this holiday break. We gave her time off. Mm -hmm. She's seen the family. I think it's necessary. Yeah. We all needed a reset. I'm winded from standing up battery. and putting a battery in a camera. I do push-ups every day, guys. I've been I've been proud of my physical health. I need to start running. I sound like I'm 60 pounds overweight, um, and that's not good. I mean, it just I, I stood up and put a battery in a camera. You're dying. Jesus. Well, and to elaborate a little more, 
I just want to add one more thing to the persona non grata thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, that sounds Latin. I don't know what that is. Well, what it means is if someone becomes... Oh, okay, so what I looked it up was persona non grata. It says, what happens if you are persona non grata? Because it is an actual term. Mm-hmm. So what that means is if someone becomes or is declared persona non grata, they become unwelcome or unacceptable because of something they had said or done, but this is enforceable by governments. So that's kind of crazy. So I thought that was interesting. So I'm guessing most of the time it would be criminals of some sort, or maybe if you're a band like Guar. You know, they pretty much probably got persona non grata from Richmond, Virginia. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Which is where they're from. And I believe they couldn't play shows there for a very long time. So did uh, Ozzy over in the, in San Antonio. Oh, well, that's because he pissed on the Alamo. Yeah, but that's just, yeah. But I'm, I'm with you. I'm on Team Ozzy. I mean, whatever, dude. Fucking Davy Crockett died there. What's he supposed to do, you know? Yeah. Davy, Davy Crockett. King of the World from here. But I wanted to re... Um, before we ended with uh, our, our little thing, I wanted to revisit like what, what this is. And like at the end of the day, Tales from the Head were two great friends that unknowingly had a rough end to 2019 and started 2020. Yeah, and basically we're just... We're on the journey to improve our mental health through... Um, through talking and not suppressing the way we feel. I think that's very important. Yeah. That we have to do. We need to like validate our feelings. Validate and just, it. And talk it. Give it give it give it life, but then don't let it consume you. Right. Yes. Don't give it power. Right. Admit that it exists almost like conjuring. Like yeah. we basically what we need to do is what's the name of that family again? Uh the uh, the Warren the Warrens basically we need to have our own little room of idols of problems <laughs> we need our Annabelles we, we need our little carousel thing we need the little we need that samurai yeah. fucking outfit that they have going on right and there. don't touch it yeah but it's like keep it safe keep it somewhere close but keep it locked away you know like these are things that we need to deal with but we need to keep them so we understand they're real but we can't let them consume who we are oh you know? absolutely not so. Dude. It's like these evil things need to, we need to keep them, but we need to like control it. So don't give it power. Don't give it power. Don't give it power. Hell yeah. And I think that's it for this week, guys. We appreciate you guys stopping by. Oh, as always, please like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your grandma. We are going to be coming up with some new merch in the next few months Mm -hmm. and we're excited. Hell yeah. So we are going to be having some talk about that soon, but until then, please check out our Dead Air Digital Instagram. That is also going to be the link in the bio has the link to our T Public website where you can get all our merch. Like and right um, I'm unfortunately not rocking it, but Danny, as you can see, he's got the TFTH logo right there. There it is. You can get that on T Public, like I said, on the uh, Dead Air Digital Instagram link in bio. Mm-hmm. Until then, guys, we'll see you later.